Hey guys, what's going on? Welcome back to another episode of Schmodown Backstage here on SEN. My name is Ben Bateman. Today we are going to be doing a very special show for you. It's going to be co-hosted by the one, the only, you know him as John, the Outlaw Roca. How you doing, Peace, John? everyone. What's going on, Ben? Good to see you. Good to see everybody. Thanks for joining us live, everyone. Uh, I'm looking forward to having this discussion, and uh, I'm excited to bring on all the people we're bringing on here, Ben. Yeah, we've got a stacked show. It's a mm. it's a unique show today. We're doing a different sort of show format. I think in yeah. the midst of everything that's going on, John, in our country and in the world, yeah. there's a bit of a hesitation by a lot of people to do any kind of regularly scheduled programming, any kind yeah. of traditional broadcasting. I know action's been affected by it. I, yeah. I think I've seen you've taken days off from your broadcasting mm -hmm. as well. And so today we wanted to do a little bit of a different show. There's a lot happening in the movie trivia schmodown in our sport. Um, and yeah. we have a lot of the sort of most plugged in voices to what is going on coming on the show today. So upcoming, yeah. we've got uh, we've got Robert Butler, the third. We've got uh, Winston Marshall, Jay Washington, Chance Ellison um, should be a great show. And the thing that's really unique about today's show is that we will not be doing any kind of a uh, super chat or Streamlab live uh, conversation. We will be taking donations all day uh, for the for the. Uh, the, co the cause the color of change, which is the same cause that every single dollar that went on to SEN this morning went to. And so anybody that wants to donate to that, um, you know, please donate in Streamlabs or Super Chats. We just we just won't be doing that as a major part of our show today as the regularly yeah. scheduled programming. So um, I think without any you know additional hesitation, let's bring in our first guest of the day. Um, you guys know him as RB3. We have the one, the only Robert Butler, the third. How you doing, man? Hey, what's up, y'all? Thank you all for uh, thanks for having me today. Um, it was just we this is already planned like way before any of this stuff kind of blew up. So I'm just happy to be here. What's up, brother, man? Yeah. yeah, it's really good to have you here, man. I know it's it's weird how the universe works that way sometimes. You know, I know we had we had spoken last week to be about coming on. And um, obviously last night, Twitter was ablaze and things went crazy. And uh, so I think, you know, maybe people think it's uh, that's what it is, but it's certainly not what it is to us. No, I'm happy to have you here to talk about the showdown and uh you know we want to go match by match your career we want to talk about every <laughs> that, that's even a worse conversation that's even that might be even uh more more hurtful uh, i don't know we'd like to talk about the young bucks today uh rb3 what do you think about <laughs> yikes um, so, days, so yeah so yeah, man. Uh, I know we've got you know we've got some matches coming up here pretty soon. Everybody's kind of just waiting to see what things go on in the in the movie trivia shmoda and what's getting posted. But I know there's just it's it's hard to it's hard to focus. I think on really any media that's happening right now. Uh, mm -hmm. I feel like I feel like all day every day I am living in sort of the same the same conundrum that we all do, mm -hmm. where it's like you can't stop paying attention to what's outside your front door, but. The, you know, the world is continuing. There's there's movie trailers being dropped online and tweets and, and people want to talk about other things and music. And and you get sucked back into that for a second. And then you have this moment where you stop and it's like, nope, it's still going on. <laughs> that it didn't go away. Um, how are you guys dealing with that right now? Oh, man, honestly, um, I, I'm you know, I don't know how, how it's going with Roka, but it's just been like um, for me personally, it's just been like trying to process like uh, like all these different things that's happening in the world, um, trying to do my best to be a part of the fight and be a part of doing the right thing. Um, you know, this um, over yesterday and today, um, I've been helping my my girlfriend, um, Destiny Thomas. She's been doing like these really great like um, lunch lunches and, and giving out water to people who are like peacefully protesting in downtown LA. So we've been mm -hmm. doing that. So, you know, it's just good to be a part of the fight. Uh, I personally consider this like the new civil rights movement, the new um, kind of era that, you know, we're going to start addressing real racial inequality. So I want to be a part of that. Um, tomorrow for First Cut, we're doing a, a, a live stream. We're doing another one of our live streams. We do them every other Thursday. And tomorrow's live stream is also going to be going directly towards um, fundraising and, and, and organizations um, you know, regarding the Black Lives Matter movement and the protest. And I think, you know, it's important that everybody who has something to contribute to the fight, whether it is making food or it is using your platform to do a live stream for fundraising, it's important that we do that. So I, I applaud the Schmodown. I applaud you guys on backstage for being open to doing this kind of dialogue and discussion, um, encouraging diversity and encouraging um, racial unity to, we'll finish Schmodown to, um, highlight uh, the good that we could do for the world and to, to to raise this money and to do these fundraisers. So I really appreciate that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I think it's, 
Oh, go ahead, John. Go oh, ahead. no, go ahead, Ben. Go ahead. I just I think it's important for everybody to realize here that the discussion today and, and this episode and the comments that you're going to leave afterwards, this is a place for a constructive conversation. Mm. That's what this platform is for today. Uh, if we wanted to have it be, you know, let's let's go back and forth and get into the arguments, we just wouldn't have done the show today. That's not what the show is for today. It's to elevate the platform of the people that we have in this league that want to speak up about it, um, yeah. that that you feel compelled to speak up about it, and that's what this is this is about today. So, yeah. if there's any hate in the chat, if there's anybody who's trolling, um, we have Goddard in here. I can see him in here. You'll be booted. That's not what it's for today. Yeah. Please stay away from that. Yeah, well, I mean, one of the reasons uh, I pitched this as a possibility was because I felt like it could be a, a time for good. It could be used for good. We brought on, uh, you know, people who have so because Janine's article is the one that really sparked. I got to give her some props here, of course. Janine the Machine, you know, Janine's article about being a black female coming into the schmodown. Um, I thought it would be good to start and highlight that, and then speak to other uh, black people who've been part of the schmodown. People of color have been part of the schmodown and seen how much it is an inclusive environment. It's always been supportive and positive, uh, and uh, in that way, you know, always, always opening the doors to anybody who can play this game regardless of color of skin regardless of gender and i think that's been an important thing you know and being one of the first people to win a title as a person of color seeing other people come through and mention it every once in a while it's always been something that has humbled me and helped me feel appreciated by those people and i've always tried to give it back as well so having these people come on to talk about it winston j uh you know chance and rb3 here it's uh, it's it, very heartwarming to be honest with you because there's so much uh, madness and craziness and despondency and going on in the world out there to for all of us to get together and talk about what how we can be a symbol of inclusivity i think is incredibly important yeah i think also you know people people were asking um and oh, I this morning I said in the chat, you know, isn't it important to hear the voice of the fans? Isn't it? Isn't and, and I think you know we, we have to answer that question here with with doing a show without comments today because I do think that including the audience is is very important. I think it's very meaningful. I don't think you can say that you know we're not going to include the audience and that's the fairest thing to do. But in this particular case, in this particular show, uh, we're taking a little bit of a break from that. There will be plenty more shows. There will be SEN tomorrow and backstage next week. With Mm -hmm. Those will all be open, so don't worry about it. It's just today we have a lot of voices on the show um, talking about some really, really, really important stuff. Um, mm -hmm. And you know, I think we will we will address uh, what's going on in our in our Shmodan community and and what happened last night. But I don't think we need to make it the focus of the show today. Mm -hmm. um, and so I think to kind of get into that next part of the conversation, I want to bring in our next couple guests. We're going to have kind of a full house today. Um, mm -hmm. We're going to be bringing in Jay Washington and Winston Marshall, co-managers of Swag. Oh, hey, hey, how you been? Yo, uh, hey, up, th bro? hey, thanks for sending me that uh, DM, Winston, because I realized I had to take that down. What, what did you do? What, uh, what did you my, do now? My, my number and email was on that one. I was like, I had to take it. Oh, <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, you're in trouble, trouble now, man. Oh, trouble shit. Now. But I got to take it down, too. Uh-oh. Oh, I deleted the tweet. Don't worry. But you better take it down. What you posted right now. I put it in the story. My, my bad. Okay, you better take it out your story. Go ahead. I'm still here, though. Go ahead. I'm here. We here. We so, <laughs> real quick before we. First of all, thank you, Ben. Pleasure happy to be here look secondly we are <laughs> we are posting no we're posting and for those who follow us for unblurred in the hood we did our show yesterday and we did a fundraiser as well and we were happy to say that we raised thirty five hundred dollars for two different two amazing charities we're sending amazing half to black lives matter and the other half to sip and saunder it is in a coffee shop in inglewood which is helping to give coffee to uh first line first frontline responders and so we basically funded their gofundme their gofundme was for eighteen hundred dollars and we wow. helped them reach their goal today Nice. We just sent them seventeen fifty. So we yeah, just sent them seventeen fifty. So that's 50. amazing. Respect, man. That's yeah. really really cool. I like that. Um, you know, and and I think I think one of the things on that note that I'm I'm really proud of this community for is I'm seeing people talk about, hey, you know what? I'm I'm pulling some of my higher patronages to some creators because I want to be able to spread it around to a lot of causes that are in need right now. You know, people people and causes that really need help. Um, because, you know, I mean, content is great. A lot of, you know, we all have our own platforms and we all make content. We're proud of the content we make, but right now, you know, me talking about Patrick Swayze's hairline from 1991 is a little less important. It doesn't really matter quite as much right now, you know, and, and I don't, <laughs> and I, and I'd, lo I'd love to make a pitch for why you guys should join my Patreon, but that's not what it's really about. You don't see Patrick Swayze's crease right here, right here, right here, join the Patreon, right here. We'll talk about it if we go over there too. I'm just saying, but you got to be a Patreon to get right here. 
It's like the wind. Yeah. Um, <laughs> well, can I, let me jump in and ask the three of you. Like, what has been your experience being a part of the Shmodown? You know, uh, obviously as a competitor, but also, you know, as black men coming into the Shmodown. And what has been your experience? Has it been inclusivity? Has it been a strong place for you to feel equal in 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 what you do? Uh, what's been your experience being a part of it? Uh, well. Go ahead, Jake. Go ahead. Oh, okay. So when I came in, RB3 was already a part of the crew doing uh, the engineering for Schmoes. No, yep. so he was already there. And honestly, at first, it was not much color in the Schmodown. Let's just be honest. And well, it was weird. It was, it was a weird feeling at first. But, uh, you know, I got to know everybody. And, you know, there was no pushing people to the side. Everybody was inclusive. It was a family. I'll, I'll be honest. I would rather be in the old studio where we were filming the matches any day of the week as opposed <laughs> to the new one because ugh, the new one is just like, ugh. but we all we all would sit around in the couches and everything and then to watch how it grew and then even watch. I'll be honest. There was some backlash for a while about there not being a lot of diversity in it <clears throat> and to watch Christian and Mark take that, make that effort to make that happen and make that change yeah. and to see where it has gone now to see not only the diversity in the game but it's fandom you know what i'm saying so that's a big thing as well for me yeah um i mean i would say it was it was interesting coming into the schmodown in the sense that uh, i was brought in by my friend uh cheyenne she had like heard of it before and i came in and saw a match and i just thought the concept itself was cool um mm -hmm. I, I jay was the first black person i saw there which i don't know if you know the story oh uh, here we go hold on why you gotta do this story look we're trying to have well, I, 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 I'm, I'm aware but jay came came up to me he's like who is you i was like yeah. I mean, what's up, man like he knew he knew my homegirl cheyenne so he said hi to her but that's that's how he greeted me <laughs> and as you can tell that has been our relationship since mm -hmm. um but I, it was it was interesting coming in because like I mean I grew up in white suburbia so I grew up used to just being surrounded by white people and seeing few black faces um, and so there's always a level of like yourself that you do hold back a little bit depending on that scenario um, I think what really tipped the scales for me where I realized how inclusive this actually had that it was not only moving towards but had the potential to be was uh, when I was serious about challenging Jay to a uh, a black movie Schmodown and Christian went so far as to like make the Black History Month like Schmodown exhibition match and how yeah. well that was received. Yes. Uh, the fact that we had everybody involved being black. So the desk uh, being black, the interviews being black, us, all that kind of stuff. It was it was a really powerful moment um, because it let me know that that's the direction that they were trying to move in. They were tr they they saw that there was a little bit of a gap that could be filled, and they did that. Uh, or they're they're moving they're moving towards that. Uh, there's always stuff that can always move further along. Uh, I, I'm still a huge advocate that we can figure out a way to get a a black uh, movie slice um, in the sense that I get that we've got directors and stuff like that. But let's be real, it is a genre. It is it really is a genre. Like I mean, black exploitation back in the day. And then even the stuff you see in the 90s and now, it is a very specific type of film. I mean, it can be general sweeping like a Black Panther, but mm -hmm. then there's also things like, you know, The Wash. You know what I'm saying? Like, yes, yeah. technically The Wash is like- That's the car wash. Here's the problem though. Here's my real big, here's my, I, I'm gonna just say this to, to, as an amendment to Winston. Sure. Him bringing up The Wash, you gotta ask him, has he ever watched The Wash? Yes, because when I it came, eat it. You no, yeah. not. Bro, how, right. how many movies? How many movies yeah. have you not seen? How many black movies have you seen? How many? Not, not even the seventy black 70. movies. He no, was coming at me for the nineties ones before. Yeah, the oh, match, you go for the before, remake? You go for the, the no, 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 for the for so for he the, ain't seen New the, Jack City. Yes, yes, I, yes I did. Yes, I did. Yes, I did. So here's what was the, the thing. movie. I had to. I had to watch a number of movies before the match. I'm not gonna lie. See, you see how bad that is. Before the somebody, but I. But it's fine. But it's fine. But it's fine. But it's fine. Couple yeah. Growing up in white suburbia, it does have its drawbacks. Number one, number one, because I didn't say it at the beginning of the show, so we can't curse on this show. Did so oh, I swear? I thought I thought I thought I cut myself up. Did I swear? I thought I, mean. I heard Jay, but he was he was Jay was full of passion there. I'm not sure what he said really. <laughs> he was just yelling a lot. I couldn't quite hear it. Uh, I thought I caught one in there, but I, I sorry I to the uh, But uh, I did want to ask about this really quickly because I've heard this I've heard this before, and I think it's I think it's a super interesting 
slice idea. But my question to you is, as somebody who like really tries to break down what mm. movies would end up on any given slice for the purpose of studying it, I can see Chance here in the wings. I can see his eyes lighting up. <laughs> <the same way. laughs> what, what exactly? What exactly? is a black movie. Like if you tell me sure. waiting to exhale is a black movie or soul is. plane is a black movie. I get that. That's the wash. Well, but it's, okay. Is it, is, I got it. Got go. I, I got this may be the greatest black moment movie. in the Schmodown backstage history. I want to hear this. Definitely. I got it. I got this. All right. So it really, it really okay. comes down to one of three things. Hmm. If it's a led by a predominant, like the stars predominantly are black. So okay. in all honesty, you could include like a, uh, uh, what, like, what man on fire? I know that like just with Denzel Horner, uh, maybe not, maybe not, maybe not, maybe not, but see, but but maybe not. But hold on, hold on. Mm. So predominantly, predom the, the stars are predominantly black. Mm -hmm. okay. The second would be if the director themselves is black. That has a large that has a large thing too because they're going to put their stamp on it that way. And then the third, realistically, is how does it affect the culture? If it, if it directly affects the black culture, then it would be okay. something that would be included. And yeah. I, to be honest with you, I love being a manager. I would be more than happy to take a season off doing that to help cultivate this because I truly believe that like, one, it is a massive part of cinema that gets underrepresented in a lot of things, including in the Schmodown. You do have your Denzel movies, you do have your Samuel Jackson, your Rock movies, but we're not just Denzel, The Rock, and and you know what I'm saying? Like it's well, we way got, more than that. We got Tyler Perry now. I will kick you in the throat. <laughs> hey, I can't curse on this. Y'all might want to drop me out if you bring up dude name one more time. Let me let me let me address that because is Hope Floats a black movie? Because that's directed by Forrest Whitaker. Now you're saying the combo has to be black directors it's, and black cast. Yeah, because yeah, the, I would say the combination right. because again, Forrest Whitaker directed ser several other movies, and there are movies yes, that are did. directed by black by black directors that are not necessarily mm. for the culture. Mm -hmm. Like you had that, I think that has to be synonymous with yes. it. Like, okay. hell, you could even say when it comes to some Spike Lee movies, like, look, uh, Sweet Blood of Jesus. I don't know if we want to call that a black movie or just a <laughs> hum movie. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, oh, nah, that's not, nah, nah, I'm not gonna let you disrespect that movie. That's a great movie. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's a great, that's a great movie. No, bro. Snoop in a dress, Snoop from the wire in a dress. You're not gonna do this. We're not gonna do this, our people. <laughs> now, what about now? What about uh, uh, Color Purple? The Color Purple that is Steven Spielberg, but is probably black it, it is black 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 for the and, and it's based the off a black book and it's based mm -hmm. off based yeah. on a black book Alice so yes Walker that would be considered yes it so would like be considered fences, a black fences, movie. fences would be considered a black movie well yes, that's a black absolutely. no fences is a black play oh, let's just call like, it which right. became a black I, I, I movie mean, obviously <laughs> fence is a black movie it stars it stars well, no, it's Denzel a, and Davis play. directed by Denzel but I'll tell you right now like real talk this is a movie that is like uh like that Josh McCuga would kill at, and it would be a hundred percent be considered black all bad boys. boys. All the that, bad boys. All bad, bad boys. Oh, yeah, true, true. Because again, of what they specifically do for the culture, on top of the fact that you have Will and Martin at the top, I know, like for example, the middle so, one was done by Michael Bay, but the, yeah. the, that thing is quoted so much across the black community. It is raised up all as right, like a movie right, that we, you know what I mean? Like, all right, why watch this? Ben Bateman, who plays yep. uh, Marcus Burnett's wife in Bad Boys? Ooh, I know this one. Uh, who plays Marcus Burnett? It's Gabrielle Union. No. Wrong. Risa Randall. Arisa but, you were, but you were close. Gabrielle Union is the girlfriend of uh, of Mike, Mike Lowry, Lowry and so the sister of Marcus Burnett. Uh, Mike yeah, Lowry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You were you were in the ballpark, baby. You were the seat. You can do it. You can handle a black wheel slice. I'm telling you. You can handle it, but you see, you got to get it. Okay, okay. Let me Harvey ask you this. Like, what, about, what, what about? Yeah. What about like what about like glory? Okay. So you got you got Denzel wins an Oscar well, more well, than that's just, well, that's just a category in itself with slave movies. Like uh. <laughs> you meant you said primarily <laughs> black. I don't want slavery. I, no, no, I'm just saying no no because and, and I, I, it sounds like I'm being funny with it, but you have to I mean granted, there are unfortunately a, a big genre, a chunk of films oh, that yeah. are legitimately slavery movies. Yeah. There's more than enough yeah. for a category. There's more than enough. I, and I hate that. I mean, I'm not sure. It might sound like, but it, yeah, it's more than enough for, and I understand saying, calling them slavery movies. I don't know another. I just, it, because that's what it's based upon. Yeah, you get what I'm yeah. saying? But it's unfortunate. There are, again, you just brought up Glory, 12 Years a Slave, Harriet. We can keep yeah. going. Birth of mm -hmm. a Nation, you know, all these different things. And it, it, it does when you say, yes, those are still black movies, but that is still its own category. That's it's, true, it, but, 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 it would, but I would say it would fall under that wheel slice. It would because, again, we, we, one of the prerequisites other than uh, the black director and the stars would be what it did for the culture. Co Glory, mm -hmm. it's one of those things that is constantly talked about, yes. including Denzel getting true. his Oscar. So and like the tier. That, 
exactly. So there's so yes, I would I would include that, and that's that's the whole thing. I like I said, I would have no problem like sitting and hashing this out to figure it out. Um, and it's just from again from the standpoint that a lot of movies, like I I know for a fact, part of where I failed as a competitor, black movies is the stuff that I watch. You know what I'm saying? So like that, like I could quote Friday upside backwards, upside mm-hmm. down, all the people that played in it. All of the side stories about it. The same thing about the uh, about the wood. The same thing about the best man. Like I could go on for days. You know what I'm saying? Love and basketball. So that that's what I'm saying is that there that is an element, and there's something to be said about people that know that whole side of cinema yep. history. Now, what about Creed? Is Creed a white black movie and Creed two a black movie? No, they're both black movies. They're both, no, they're black, both, movies? Black, they're both okay. black movies right. because Ryan Coogler was behind it. Michael B. Jordan and to recontextualize the <laughs> Rocky story. Um, hey, 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 hey. I'm hey, just hey. so impressed you said Michael B. Jordan without any <laughs> hate in your heart. I know, I know, I know. I know. I know. It's tough, it's tough, it's tough, it's tough. Uh, but we okay. gotta stick together, we gotta stick together. But uh, yeah, that you know, that I would definitely put that in that category. I wouldn't put any other Rocky movie in that category. No, no, of course and not. And it's really just mainly because in that movie, in particular, you know, Rocky's more of like a supporting character, but Creed right. is really the main star, so I, I think. I think it resonated with a certain level amongst the community too that 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 you could put in that category. Yeah. Yeah. And I and I think the last thing about it too is and and for anybody that still is kind of dissenting against this, I just want to say two things. I mean, the first, if the idea is that you do want to have inclusivity, that means including the things that come from people's cultures as far as like because that cinema is all important. I would even support honestly, and it would make the, it would make it instantly harder. But I would even support having an international film slice. I feel Screw like that's. <laughs> Why? A Latino movie slice would be that nice too, once in a while. That we too, matter. <laughs> that too. That too. Roca. Latino lives matter too. I'm just. I saying. apologize, but then, but then the other, the other part I'm about be it. I'm silent right now. I'm just not gonna <laughs> say that. The other, the other part is if if this is a like the point to me with the Shmoda why I loved it is it's a celebration of movies. It's a celebration of cinema. So that should include all forms of it, in my opinion. And so it, it, it again, it's I'm not asking for give me like. Black exploitation and not is black and this and that like just one solid one and uh, because there's gonna be a breadth of movies for that anyway a lot of that will be surface questions regardless except for maybe a few five pointers where you're like you know what was the last line said in Love and Basketball you know that Bateman or Roca last line said Love and Basketball no no Roca uh, uh, um, um oh my god come on with Jay did RB three froze five four oh no three. we lost him. Repeat so the question. Over here. <laughs> what was the last the, the last line of I love? Can't and I can't remember it. I'm telling you, I'm gonna bring on our next special guest right now because I'm looking at his face here, and I feel like he might actually know he it. it. All can right, he, can he Google it. Can he Google it fast enough? No, I'm not gonna do that to him. I'm not gonna do that to him. I'll give another. <laughs> Show me your hands, Chance. <laughs> um, no, I'll, I'll say, but I'll wait. I'll wait until he uh, until he gets in here because I think he knows it, man. I, I, I feel like Chance. Yeah, we're looking at his. No, he's shaking his head. He doesn't. He doesn't. So the last, the last <laughs> no, line of love, the last, so the last line of love in basketball is double or nothing. So the idea yeah. is that yeah. this couple, the entire thing, they played ball That's together right. as kids. They grew up playing basketball and in and out of love. And she's like, play me for your heart. And he yams on her for like the last five minutes of the movie. He's just <laughs> dunking on her, breaking her ankles, all that stuff. And so essentially being like, I don't love you. I've moved on. But then right before he's about to walk away, he turns around and says, double or nothing. And every black person that has ever seen that was like, <gasps> Oh my dear! Oh, 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 I remember last year or the year before that, I got to sit down for a couple minutes with Dennis Haysbert. And I wanted to ask him about Heat. That was what I wanted to talk to him about. Yeah, 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 I yeah. love Heat. He's, yeah, yeah. And I love his character in Heat. Um, but I remember I told like three people that week I was going to talk to him. And every single one of them was like, you got to just talk to him about love and basketball. That's yeah. the movie. That's the yeah, so I'm always like a, I feel like I got to catch up on the movie. Well, it's, I got to talk to Omar Epps about it. And he certainly went off about it. Oh. On, at Collider, that was fun. That, that movie is yeah. so, so it's, good. I should have known that so double or nothing. Double, so, double, yeah, it's a good double, question double. too. Though is Martin Lawrence has Martin Lawrence made a black movie other than Bad Boys? Oh yeah, um, okay. I would say what? Let's see. Oh, I don't want to say it. I don't want to say, but the Big Mama's, Mama's House, House. House, the Big Mama and My House movies. Um, <laughs> Big Mama's House counts. Okay, all right. It does. Uh, I would honestly say Black Streak if you can, or not Black Streak, Blue, Blue Streak. Street. Uh, Blue Street, yeah. which has right. Luke Wilson in it. But uh, remember, Dave Chappelle's in that and plays like his cohort the whole time. 
Like there's, there's a whole laundry list of stuff that's in there. Uh, I, think there's, I think there's a chance. I think there's a Black chance. Mike? Speaking that chance here, I want to say chance has some a story about Big Mama's house. I don't know why I think that. I feel like chance <laughs> told me once. No, a thin line between life. love and hate. Life, I'm gonna life and a thin line between love and hate. And house life party is great. House party house is also party. Party. And I house honestly would include on. black. If someone said black knight. I would include that for the simple fact that like, <laughs> hold on, hold on, hold on. But part of the reason why I, it's not a good movie. It's not a good movie. But I would include that it is because the whole premise is a black man has traveled back to the medieval days, bro. True. Like it's true. literally about him dealing with race relations sir, and sir, medieval time. Sir Skywalker. <laughs> sir Skywalker. <laughs> all right, all right. I'm bringing. Bring him in. Bring bringing him in. on our next guest here. Oh, we got boy. Cobra himself, Chance Ellison, coming oh, on no. the show. <laughs> Chance, do you do you have a Big Mama's house story? Did I make that up, or is that? No, I don't know. I don't know where you got that a Big Mama's house story. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Not once have I ever talked to you about Big Mama's house. Nice try, white man. Nice try. I mean, I mean, Chance. I'm assuming you have some form of a Big Mama in your life, right? <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, I mean, no. I'm not good. Clearly, that means no. I'm not, <laughs> no. I mean, we, it's, it's all good. It's all good if you don't. You can. You could. I, I. You can share my big mama if that makes you feel any better. Oh, uh, thank you. What about <laughs> the Nutty Professor? Is that a black movie? The Nutty yeah. Professor. Yeah. 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 Oh yeah. yeah. Yes. Cool. I agree. I agree. Me, the whole cast is Eddie Murphy. Plus yeah, true. Jenny. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Jenny it up. And, and what Dave Chappelle with that and wacky hair, for a little bit. that crazy <laughs> hair. <laughs> yeah. All right. All right. So I, I got a question for you guys. Um, you know, every one of us, I think, spends a, a pretty decent amount of time on social media, right? We all are checking Twitter and and, and especially now, you know, it's, it's a very useful tool and a very informative one. Um, do you guys find yourselves going down sort of these rabbit holes on social media it just gets more and more and more depressing? And if you do, if the answer is yes. What do you do? How do you kind of bounce back from that and put one in front of the other to finish the rest of your day to, to do anything to cook food for yourself? I mean, like I found myself a couple times in the last in the last three or four days noticing it's been like 90 minutes of just staring at this thing. And I feel so sad and so like empty. I feel like my body can barely move. What do you do about it? <laughs> I mean, the, 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 the easiest answer that I can say for that and someone asked me the same thing. Um, I, I have a number of things that I do. One is numbing myself entirely. So I try and stay away from alcohol unless I'm in a really like I need a drink place because that can lead to bad things. But I, I watch some of my yeah. favorite movies. I play with some of my favorite games. Uh, I read uh, that stuff that's not social media based or news based. Um, I, I, re I rely on my foundation. So people like Jay, uh, like my my family, my girlfriend, things like that to try and help vent stuff out. Um, and then most importantly, uh, and that was kind of the, 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 the opening of my tweet uh, about our donation was, you know, the, the quote from the, the show, The Boondocks, what do you do when you can do nothing, but there's nothing you can do? And the answer is you do what you can. And so in that case, uh, I raising the money we did, um, having discussions with people, um, just trying to spread awareness, whatever. That's what keeps me going. Because if I don't, I go into this very, very dark place, um, which only makes things worse. It's why I actually am a big advocate of telling people not to post black bodies being harmed and murdered over the internet. If you wanna share a news story where the video is in it, people can have a buffer to see this is gonna include some stuff in there, but you don't wanna post the immediate autoplay of stuff because for, I, I can't speak for all these gentlemen, but I can assume so for the, the other four black gentlemen here. It has a psychological toll on your mind to constantly see black people killed and maimed and, and beaten and broken. And it, and it, it, it that's what will get you. Um, so that's kind of been how I um, balance. Out. I will, I will say, yeah. Go ahead. Rick, I'm sorry. No, I'm going to say like Jay and I are older than everybody else right now. We've been seeing this for a few decades now. And on social media, you see it and it's, yeah, I know. Thank you, Winston. Winston said the other four black gentlemen, so I'm officially black. Thank you, Winston. But like you, you, <laughs> you're not going to call the chance like this. He was, he was, he was talking about that. Yeah, but, but I will say, he's, he's been waiting to say Black Lana again. He's been waiting no, for that. I <laughs> four. God damn it. Like, God and I, Nar and I was one of the four. I Jay and I okay, have all right. seen this, right? I mean, Jay and I are from that time where they taught us this stuff in high school without fear. They well, showed us movies about it. They told us we read 
read newspapers about it. We read, we did papers on it in school growing up, this idea of racism in this country, the history of racism in this country. And so when you go on Twitter, it's just more immediate and it can feel, I mean, yesterday, I, yesterday was the most depressed I've been about this uh, since it all started. And the, you can feel like there's no, you feel hopeless and you feel helpless when you see so many people are on another side of this issue that are so angry about their side of this issue that you feel like, how can we ever find common ground? And in the past, in this country, we've always been able to find common ground. And it feels like if you go onto Twitter, there's no way we can ever find common ground. And so, yeah, I hear you, Ben. You can go down into these black holes, so to speak, or into these holes on Twitter and feel like there's no way out. But I think you have to do the self-care that Winston's talking about. Like, I rely on my girlfriend, too. Like yesterday when I got really depressed, we sat down for just an hour just talking about it, just sitting on the couch, head on each other's shoulder, just talking about it. Because that can be that little bit extra that gets you back in the fight, that gets you, you know, kind of deto de detoxes you from it and then gets you back level to go and, and watch it again, you know? I just want to add on to Winston about, first and foremost, about the videos. Um it is very jarring and not only yeah rogue is right we were taught about it but hmm. me those i'm no secret where i'm from and when i say that because i've seen people be murdered i've what i've seen bodies laid out i've hmm. seen but i've seen us play outside as kids and look over to the corner and watch some people in the alley and then you hear pop and watch a body drop i've seen that yeah. i've seen the cops in chicago do their thing you know so it is it's extremely jarring any other any way to see it but for me personally, um, I've, I've tried to, you know, find different ways to detox from it because now I've gotten to the point where I'm so I'm so angry about it. Anybody y'all know me? I'll just anybody says I'm stupid. I'm letting you have it. And so I have to try to find my way to pull away from my phone or my computers. Mm -hmm. And then I'll just, I wish to know that to remove everything out of my room and I just start working out, you know, or I go ahead and grab my Roku remote and it's me and Digimon all the way through. But, it, you know, because I have to watch something that's so absurd. Power that take, Power Bro, Rangers. It's, all something, it's, all, it's something so absurd. It'll take my mind away from that. You know, I have to do these things. And then again, it's also hard because I go down these rabbit holes and instantly I think about my children. Yeah. You know, I think about my son and my daughter. So it, it's very difficult because a lot of people don't understand the, you know, what we what we see and what we experience physically. But the mental and emotional toil this has taken, has taken on us is a lot. Hmm. Plus, but there is positivity, Ben. And I don't know, Chancellor RB3, please chime in. But there is positivity. There's so many people like I was encouraged by the fact that even more protesters showed up the next day, even more yeah. protesters. So you see that people are inspired, that you can't kill their spirit, the American spirit to protest and fight back about against what they see as injustice. And that can elevate your spirit on that social media train as well. Yeah, speaking for myself, like when you go down that rabbit hole, because it inevitably happens, it will happen that you will go down a path that you wish you hadn't by the end of it. And for me, like it's just reminding myself that it's kind of like watching the local news. Like, it, yeah, it's all bad stories, but you have to remind yourself that this is not the majority of people and that people on the whole are still good at heart. And yeah, it's when you see all these protests and see like, like all the things people are doing to, you know, support black communities and black businesses and, just the fight for equal rights that you see that and that's what brings you back to remind you that you know people people can still be good people can still be great even yeah no i mean and you know when, when we're talking about like everything regarding what we see on social media and how we interpret you know the events that are happening in the world for me you know it's sad but it's also like motivational right like it's, it's, it's like we have to really fight hard to overcome everything that the society puts on us from the police to the government, the government and just individuals in general. Um, you have to fight. And, and, and if people are not willing to fight, then you're not you're not doing anything good for the cause. You're not doing anything good for people around you. So um, it, 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 I've never really had faith in humanity to begin with. So it's not like it's being stripped away from me, um, mm -hmm. frankly. Um, just knowing the black experience in this country and just knowing what people go, what a lot of people go through. There's really, it's it's the most you. It's it's like usual and casual at this point to see the, these events kind of play out. So you know, um, for me, it's like you know, it, 
there's not it's not just the system of just a few bad apples. It's an entire institution that kind of allows this kind of behavior to continue. So we need to. Uh, so to me, it's like, yeah, you got to fight. You got to you got to speak up. You got to speak your mind. You got to use your platform for whatever you want to use it for. And and hopefully your platform is to speak for justice and for equality. And if your platform is not for that, then get out of here. It's, it's, you're, you're worthless to me. I think one of the things that's so different about this moment in American history is that there's an instinct when when one of these videos has gone viral in the world, all of a sudden pays attention. There's an instinct that I think a lot of people have that's uh, there's outrage and then it passes. And then it's 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 very similar to like the way we feel, I think, when you see like a school shooting. Right. We've seen it so much now. It's it's hard. It's hard to hold on to it in your heart and your mind for longer now than even a few days, because unless you're involved with that cause directly, life continues happening. We're in this unique point because of the pandemic that we're all in and what's happened. We're we're all paying attention. We're all paying attention. And it's not it's not I've driven I've driven through you know my neighborhood in Santa Monica the last three days. Every store downtown is boarded up. There's glass all over the ground. The National Guard's on the corner. It's this is not this is not like this thing that's happening on social media that I go outside and it's not really there. If I try to go for a run, I, I will run into a, a friggin' tank. Like that's happening right outside my door in Santa Monica. It's never, I've never seen anything like this before. And so, you know, I, I've been trying to sort of put it in context in, in my experience. So I asked my dad, who was an activist in the late 60s, you know, in 68, he was one of the people that took the, the Democratic National Building uh, at, at the protests. And I asked him if was this the same for him, you know, 52 years ago, was, did he remember this? And he said the one thing that feels exactly the same to him is the police brutality. It's mm. identical to 52 years ago. Cars being driven through groups of people, spraying protesters with fire hoses in 68, and he left the country. He left the country for seven years <coughs> at that point because he couldn't he couldn't hack it, right? He just was like, I, I can't live in this country. And so I thought that was really interesting asking him if it felt the same to him in the late 60s. And that was the thing he paid attention to is, you know, there's been so little change there. That's a strong statement, Ben. I mean, because mm. I mean, that's back before you could actually record this stuff on social media. Yeah. How much more was it probably happening back then or how much uh, like the levels could be actually exactly the same as your dad is saying, you know, what he was seeing must be uh, just to have social media back then would have been very interesting. Well, that's what he said. So that was the yeah. thing that I thought was so interesting. He said to me, they were driving cars through the groups of people, yeah. spraying them, you know, with, with fire hoses and then the next. Oh no! Is this what they pulled a Winston? Yeah, they that's what it's like. <laughs> and say it again. Say it, sorry, Ben. You got to say it again. Say it again. And then what? He 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 told me that that he was there. You know, he's watching as the police are spraying. You know, they're spraying fire hoses and they're spraying tear gas and they're driving yeah. cars through groups of people. But the next day in the newspaper about that exact protest, none of that's reported. Nope. None of that was reported. It's just and the rioters like, that are reported. Yeah. We we, we said talk about social media. It's the same thing. Yep. Yep. We, we there's a thing Winston and I said. Uh, I don't know if we said it before on our recent town hall or we've said it previously. People, racism has never gone anywhere. It's just more readily available for you to see it. Mm -hmm. It's just readily available for you to see it. Like people thought for years and decades, black people have just been playing the victim or using the race card or just trying to act as if we're being totally oppressed and everybody's trying to hold us down. And like you said, Ben, everybody's at home. So people have no choice but to see it now in mm -hmm. their faces. Mm -hmm. And so because it's happened so frequently, which it always has been doing, it's just now everybody can focus on it and be like, oh my God, is, is this really happening? It's yeah. what's really been happening. And I, I think the other thing that makes it even worse, um, like you said, like or you both have mentioned, I mean, being in the middle of a pandemic, that's a lot of pent up energy. And if you can only imagine, like I, I, I brought it up into every stream that I'm at because I, I feel like it's a powerful sentiment. I wish as a black man, the only thing I had to worry about was COVID-19 <laughs> to be to be to be yeah. woken up yeah. to a young man getting shot while jogging a woman being killed in her home while sleeping because of a police having the wrong suspect to to a man who supposedly had a, a fake 20, which he didn't, getting killed for that. Like none of those things are death sentences and yet that was a thing. And like, all I'm thinking about is, God, I just Instacarted for six hours today. Like, do I need to go get another test? Like, etc. But then I'm also like, Jesus, if I wear a mask into a grocery store, am I going to is someone going to attack me for that shit? Is someone going to think I'm up to no good mm -hmm. for that shit? Like, yeah. oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I, I'm, I got a little too. But I, well, um, right. but 
that's that's to me the thing that's the most disheartening but i also think why we're seeing such visceral response from people is because all we've been worried about especially black people have been like gosh we just have to get through this pandemic to be reminded that we are still targets and so i think that's why you're seeing so much anger come out more so than normal is because now it's all pent up energy more so than it normally is well, and you're, and you're, you talk about this idea, Ben, of running, you know, you can jog into a tank. You can jog and see a tank. A black man jogging around that corner seeing a yeah. tank, anything could happen at that point just for jogging past. I mean, we just saw the Ahmed Aubrey situation a couple of weeks ago. That gentleman is jogging, and you see what happens to him. You just never know, you know, uh, when you're black and going into these situations, we had Jared Habon on, on, on game time on Monday with me, Jay uh, and Winston and, and Ellis. And he said, like, I've never been afraid of the police. Like it's my experience is so completely different when they show up anywhere. I actually feel safe. And that is such a different reaction than most, if not all uh, black people feel in this country. And that's the thing that they're protesting against once and for all the ending of this kind of feeling and change and it tells me when you see the extreme reaction from the other side with tanks and national guard and active military being talked about that they're afraid of this movement it's this movement is so powerful that they're they're already going to defcon 4 in their minds because they really are afraid that this could be the movement that finally changes things this could be their moment when they finally get called to the carpet once and for all and everyone needs to get called to the carpet for this it isn't just the easy targets everyone studios websites entertainment places everyone needs to get called out if you really want institutional change and that's what i hope these movements are waking people up to once and for all and i hope they don't just die down and we go back to living with the accepted norms that we've lived with for decades in this country yeah that's what you guys I, I gotta ask you guys so when you are when you are kind of looking around and you're seeing like people reacting in all the ways they are. And there's a lot of strong reactions, right? People are very, very, very agitated right now. One thing I see a lot of is people will post these videos of like a white cop hugging a black person. Mm. Um, and it's like a touching song in the background. It's a, it's a thing I've seen a lot. I've seen it on Instagram. I've seen it on Facebook. And I watch these videos. And it's not that I, it's, they're not staged. I think they're totally real videos. Yeah. But I'm wondering, is that the media that should be getting shared right now? Is that helpful to see that? Or is that kind of masking the real thing that's happening i don't think it's helpful no I yeah, honestly I, don't. I it's, not, it's not i don't think it's helpful at all because wow. you're trying to say because right now we're talking about you know we're talking about these this this terror within a police force which started out as a sl as slave catchers that's what the police force in itself started out as and then we know when we talk we want justice for cops who are killing un unjustly killing black men and women then you want to say here check out this video of a cop playing basketball in the hood he's hugging a black kid like yo you're just trying to patronize us and it's not it all it does is enrage us further mm -hmm. i would yeah, it's, I, it's, 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 i'm sorry winston go ahead you're, you're good, RB3. Go for it. No, I, I was just going to say, I, I personally find it like to be performance art. It's really nothing but, like you said, masking the truth. It's really, honestly, um, kind of disgusting and um, discouraging to even see, like, you know, people kind of glorify this kind of thing because, honestly, it's not just individual cops. Like, by saying that one cop hugs a black person, doesn't mean that the whole institution of policing isn't um, racially um, uh, indicative and, and discriminatory and and really and really terrible. Um, so for me, it's like I personally think the movement shouldn't stop and can't stop until we see real institutional change from the top down. We got to see all of these police chiefs um, be held accountable. Every single one from every single police um, precinct in the entire country got to be held accountable for their crimes. We got to look at politicians. We got to look at votes. We got to look at all of these different aspects for real change across the board before we stop this fight. Because, you know, like you said, it's, it's the, it's the same thing we have with the gun conversation. It's like, you know, we have a, we have an outrage because of a mass shooting for half of a second. And then we go back to being normal, but we can't go back to being normal. Black lives are at risk. Black lives are being taken away from, from families and, and friends in our community so we have to stand up and we have to fight like immediately i, th I think yeah. you guys make a great point i i watched patricia heaton who's a noted conservative actress share that video of killer mike 
And I think she shared that video of those three generations of black men having that conversation mm -hmm. for a half minutes. And I'm always suspect when they do that shit because they always share the let's all just hold hands and kumbaya type yeah. thing. But this is deeper than that. And this has been deeper than that for quite some time. Chance, I got to ask you, you know, we're all in L.A., man. You're in Arizona down there. Yeah. What's been the experience for you as this has popped off? Like what have been the cities that have really have any because I haven't seen almost any coverage from Arizona of any protests or vice or, or police uh, attacks on the protests. What have you seen down there? So here's the thing. I was actually just in Texas for okay. a while, spending uh, the, some pandemic with my family at the time. But I had to come back for a few days to Arizona. The day I got back, there were cops everywhere. Wow. Like literally ever. I was pulling, as I was pulling in the city, I thought I was going to get pulled over like twice. Because mm. I saw like, I saw lights and sirens go right behind me. I thought, oh, crap, is this for me? And yeah, it was terrifying. Just with everything going on. And I've been pulled over twice, but this whole time I was thinking just, you know, tensions are high right now. And there's always that thought in the back of my mind. I don't want to think it, but like if I get pulled over, this this could be it. So I try, I, w I was just driving just super on edge. Hmm. And it was really it was really uncomfortable. But yeah, it's there's not been a whole lot of coverage because there hasn't been a whole lot going on. There's been some minor protests, but nothing like major, like newsworthy. But yeah, yeah uh, here it's <clears throat> ev every, everywhere is feeling the effect of this. Yeah. Can I, can I piggyback hey. off of the, the, yeah, yeah. the question before? I mean, I think that. It's not helpful to see a cop playing basketball. It's not helpful to see a cop hugging somebody. It is helpful to see when one cop threw a black woman to the ground that a black police officer cussed him out. Yeah, yes, yeah. I saw that one. It's, that one. It, it, is, it is extremely powerful and important to see someone like police chief, uh, I believe his name is uh, Avocado in uh, Houston. Yeah. Uh, like, Acevedo, I, yeah. It's Matt's, I, I, Matt's dad. Yep. Is it Acevedo that I said? Oh, mm -hmm. yeah, 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 Acevedo. Dang, dang. Okay, yeah. yeah. But but everything that he has said and done, that's huge. It's it's huge to see. There was another one where you saw cops, like a massive row of them with all their shields and whatnot, all put that down, drop them, and go walk with the people. Those are things that are important because now you're actually trying to show me that you're trying to do something to stop this. But to just have a photo, like to me, it comes off as a photo op. If you decided, like, oh, a cop hugged a black person, because for every one of those photos, I can point out to where a cop then pepper sprayed a child, where where two college kids are just driving home and they're getting dragged out of their car tased as their ta their car is also being destroyed in Atlanta. Like I can point out to all those other different things. So for me, I can I can point out to the L.A. City Council meeting yesterday where the police yeah. chief said <laughs> openly. This is as much on the police as it is on the people that are protesting. How dare you? You, you, you like the police force murdered someone, and you want to put that on us on protest? You can't do that after, after the fact. No, 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 no. You don't get to do that. And so that that's my whole thing is I do want to see positivity. I want to see the cops doing the right thing, but I'm suspect for the ones that are like, "Oh, this is a feel good piece." I need to see like legit action and stances that show me that you are actually serious about what you're talking about. And also there's yeah. one more issue we have to always mention, and I said it yesterday with Winston on our town hall. It isn't just police chiefs and the, the precincts. You have to find a way to deal with police unions. That is the biggest issue <sighs> of them all. Police unions are what keep officers from being immediately arrested. It's what keeps them from being prosecuted sometimes to the fullest extent of the law. It's yep. what protects them and allows them, even after they have committed crimes, to be right back on the street. Police unions are a major problem. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's that, not to, sorry, uh, sorry. sorry. I was gonna say, and that's not even to mention another huge problem in the policing structure is the idea that in order to practice law, in order to become a lawyer, you have to go to uh, four to six to eight years of mm -hmm. education and higher education. But in order to enforce the law, in order to be a police officer, you only need what, six, eight weeks of training. Eight That's weeks ridiculous. Of training. Um, that leaves, yeah, that, that requires no um, accountability for your community. That requires no insight into where you live. A lot of police officers don't even live in the yep. um, areas that they represent. So it's like, it's just top down. Like I said, it's, it's all the way, it's all the way, we have to change the entire system. 
Well, and that's the thing. And you see now you read the reports, like a lot of people coming out, like uh, this gentleman in Minneapolis who was against the police unions and what they were trying to do. Uh, he said, like, whenever we voted against their raises or voted against giving them more money, it, all of a sudden they were slower to respond to calls in our districts, in our counties, if we voted against them, if we had issued them. So it becomes an essence. Uh, if you start to look at this thing, it's more than just a, you know, do you not to, well, to use that term, I guess, a black and white issue. It's not as easy as that. It's so much more complex and deeper. It's by systemic. It isn't just let's get rid of some bad cops. Systemic impl implies the union as well. The way they, they like right now, the L.A. board is voting on it. They want to give 52 percent of the budget for this year to yeah. cops, to police. That's they are. They already did. They, we, people they tried did. to. People exactly. tried to say petitions, but they, they got away with it. And that's the thing. You have to yeah. they, then they have to create this idea of well, we have to create crime if we're gonna validate getting fifty two getting fifty two percent of the budget, we gotta figure something out here. So it starts to become a, a snake eating its tail. And that's the thing at the end of the day. If you want to break this thing, you're gonna have to break it all the way down to its foundation and then build it back up again. And that's going to take a lot of time. You know, it ain't gonna be one general even Biden said that in his speech yesterday. It ain't gonna be one term. It's going to take a number of years to make it the real systemic difference that you want to see. I want to uh, jump in here and say a couple of things. So the first one is I've, I've, I'm watching the chat. We're not reading it today. If you guys are just tuning in now, um, we are donating every single dollar that gets sent in on a super chat or a stream lab. It's a color of change, but we are not going to be uh, you know reading the chat today. That's just not the show today. But mm -hmm. a couple of people asking in here, you know, why are we spending so much time talking about real world issues as opposed to the Shimoda? And this is supposed to be an escape. Uh, and I, I think to respond to that, you know, there's a couple of things I'm very proud of. We have been live for an hour. We have talked about the Schmodown for maybe five minutes. And this is one of the most watched episodes of the show that we've ever done. Um, it's incredibly important that that's the case. It's incredibly important that the audience that's watching wants to hear this because this is a group of influencers. This is a group of people all of whom who have their own brands, all of whom who work extremely hard to connect with their audiences, to build community, and to, to be able to speak honestly on this platform and have this many people watching is very, very important. Now, it brings me to a question I have for all of you guys, which is that when you're watching the discourse in the chats of the shows that you do, um, mm. when you're watching your patrons responding to posts you make and, and in the live chats, sometimes you'll see maybe somebody that you have a pretty good relationship with on a casual level because they're a fan of yours say something that's doesn't totally align with the way you feel. You know, maybe it's a little offensive. And I know, obviously, there was a lot of drama last night with, you know, Robert Myronette, one of the people in our group, posting some things that people did not agree with. And I don't want to go down the rabbit hole specifically about that, but it brings to mind the question, how do you deal with your supporters, with the community that supports you, when they don't necessarily share your beliefs? They're maybe not offensive, but they say things that are just not oh, no. you try to educate. What do you do about it? Go, 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 go. I'll put it, I'll put it, I'll put it this way. Um, <laughs> I have anybody that follows me on Twitter or anywhere else, I do not sugarcoat who I am. I've had people tell me before why it does always have to be a race thing, you don't have to bring black into it, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. Here's the thing: the whole world sees me as black always. That's never not a thing. When people say they don't see color, that's incorrect. If mm -hmm. what you're trying to say is I don't make decisions based off of color, I'll accept that answer. But to say you don't see color is a bunch of crock. And so the truth is, I am okay not being supported by or not having fans of people that do not understand that my blackness is like completely equivalent to who I am. Always, always, period. That's just, that is that is a statement of fact. In the same way that any woman is always, the, her, her, her womanness, her femininity, whatever, whatever word would be appropriate there is always is always a part of who they are. It's just, it's just the fact of life. And so that being said, I will always give someone an opportunity to say their piece and I will try and explain it to them. But if we get into territory where now I know that either you're just ignorant and you're not gonna listen or you're gonna make things worse, you can you can kick rocks. I don't I don't need that because I already have the world against me. So I don't need fake fans yeah. pretending like they support me when in actuality they only support me if I can entertain them. If I can only bring them something where it's like, oh, he said a really funny joke about the Finsock exchange. But then the minute I bring up something that's important to me and if they want to shut me up. Mm -mm. Yeah. So I, I, I have it a lot. It happens a lot. And one of the things I always I, I'm like once the same way. I let people know I'll, I'll jump. 
what you see is what you get. You chose to follow Jay Washington because you like his, you like his opinions on movies. You like his opinions on comic books and TV shows, or or you you like him as a comedian, or you like him as a wrestler, or whatever the case. You're a fan of him, but what you realize is when you get that, that's going to be consistent. I've had people who've tweeted me, I didn't follow you for this. Well, you know what? There's an unfollow and a block button. You will not be missed because you can easily be replaced. When it comes to people who are my patrons, I always call them my supervillain squad. Every single one of them know I'm not going to play games with your feelings. Like, I don't, you don't have to think completely in line with me. But I'm not going to play the BS out here that a lot of other people are going to play. I'm not going to play the field to try to appease you just to keep a Twitter, a, a Twitter number, a, a certain follower count. I'm not going to appease you just to say I have these fans. If you don't if you don't like what I got to say about like Winston said, my blackness is a thing I have to deal with every single day of my life. Mm -hmm. If you don't like it, you can leave and I promise you won't be missed. And I think people forget that because people will be like, oh, well, you're just dismissing the fans or you're alienating half your fan base. I don't want nor need you as a fan if you got to think like that. We've had the discussion about Black Lives Matter versus people going All Lives Matter. And when they go All Lives Matter and you try to tell them why people are not saying why that makes zero sense in, this, in the context of what we're doing, they want to try to have this argument. OK, guess what? I thought you were somebody I can have the discussion with, like Winston just said. I don't need to deal with it. You can talk into a void for all I care. And some people assume that because we're this personality, that we're this person, these people who are on a platform who have who give entertainment to people that we're obligated to appease their appetite for whatever they want. We're obligated to bow down to them for whatever they say. We have to like I used to have this big rupture with the fans in the Schmodown group back in the day. And I, I had to tell Christian about it. he was like, why do you say these things to him? I said, because a lot of fans were acting entitled were because they are patrons or fans that we have to kiss their ass. And it happens in not just the Schmodown, it happens in Marvel fandom, it happens in Star Wars fandom, Star Trek fandom. This happens a lot. And so you have to remind people, you might love the personality, but I am still a person. I, I, I the, the last thing I'll just piggyback off of that specifically is there's a there's a there's a saying, I can't use the real one because there's too many swear words in it, but it's essentially is everybody essentially wants, wants to be a Everybody, I'll say it this way. Everybody wants to be a black person, but nobody wants to be a black person. So it's this idea. Facts. Facts. Love, yeah. Facts. love, our, love yeah. our culture. Yeah. Love our I mean, music. You love our vernacular. All that kind of stuff. <laughs> you want to be a part of that. But the minute the, the chips hit the table, you don't want nothing to do. And that's, that's part of why I've even said I'm paying very close attention to the people that hear us and are trying to amplify us and to help heal us. And those that are quiet or even worse that are antagonizing us. Those yeah. things are huge mm -hmm. right now. Well, yeah. it's important. And that's why I have Jay and Winston on game time every Monday, because to me, you can't separate politics from sports when it gets in there. A lot of people want to separate these things out. But I know with Jay and Winston, I'm going to get the honest truth from both of these gentlemen about how they feel about the situation and a new perspective. And I appreciate that with both of them and we go wild we go wild out there's cussing on that show we go wild out on that show <laughs> this ain't your sports center i love it that is our yeah that, that should be the tagline for the show <laughs> yeah we, we we throw it down because we talk about it honestly and put it out there and you know speaking on my end and of course i'm not i'm not black so latino just a little bit uh, lesser in terms of the things that come into my chat i will speak out on them in the chat i will mention them by name during my show because I mold my fandom to be a certain way. And I'm proud that when people are done on my shows, they email me or text me or call me and tell me, your fans have complimented me for the last three days of being, that you're, you have the nicest fans. And I know because I don't stand for any bullshit on my show. And I'll cuss once. I'll cuss once. First time I've broken it in months. But I don't stand for any of that crap on my show. And that's on purpose. So I'm in Jay's camp. Does it mean I don't have 50,000 followers down the road? So be it. But at least the fans are understanding and get where I'm coming from, and I can rely on them and trust them. Yeah, and I think you know, and that's that's what's important here is like you gotta remain uh, true to your integrity, true to your truth. You know, um, I'm never gonna change anything I say. I'm never gonna adjust anything I say um, for anybody, um, regardless. Uh, you know, especially if for if it's somebody I care about, or if it's somebody in my life, you know, that's a different conversation. But it definitely, for sure, ain't gonna be some um, some white ring, right wing, you know, 
stupid idiots with no profile picture and five followers on Twitter. I'm never going to bend to that. I'm never going to bend to the person with no subscribers in the comment section. I'm never going to bend to that. So like, you, 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 and you can't because that's what leadership takes. That's what leadership takes is being able to stand up and, and stand by your morals and stand by your words and stand by your truth. Yeah. Um, I want to I want to give everybody here because we're probably here for about 10 or 15 more minutes, maybe a little longer. The opportunity <clears> to run <throat> a platform, a platform you're on that that you are having guests on, that you're speaking your mind, where, where the people can find you if they want. And this isn't just a quick this is my Twitter plug. But what are you working on right now that you're proud of? I can start with you, Jay. Uh, t- talk for a second. Um, I know he has a separate one he'll speak to as well, but I'm proud of, <clears throat> pardon me, my allergies are acting up. I'm proud of what I'm doing with Winston with Blurds in the Hood. Um, we took an idea of the two of us starting to talk about sports with Blurred and Goal and be able to expand that to talk about pop culture, news, current events, n- uh, the nerd world, and just regular things in life. And to be able to hit home and not have to pull punches. You know, a lot of people will say, well, you guys want to try to get the show picked up. You might have to try to tone back on what you say or what you do. And our both our philosophy is, and I think I can speak to Winston, speak for Winston on this one. You know what you're getting. This is us. This Dude, is yeah. us. Yeah, we're probably you know never going to get a real sponsor. <laughs> Let's be well, real. <laughs> we're sponsored by Crowd Royal Vanilla and, and I'm and still Sigurdsson. trying to get Manscaped to get on, but but you know <laughs> I'm still trying to get Manscaped to be like, yo, we we doing this, bro. Hey, but seriously, what we do because we we I've said this so many times before. I am not a super popular person by any means. I'm well known. I'm not that popular. I don't have the biggest platform, but I have something. And I will continue to utilize that to be a voice for as as long as I'm allowed to do that, as long as I have a voice. And we've been doing that. Yesterday's town hall was our 20th episode, which and we do the show weekly. So that was five months that we've been doing this and still going strong through ups and downs, technical issues and whatnot. And so that is something I'm extremely proud of. I my reviews and all that, that's whatever. My stuff I do, that's whatever. Y'all already know I'm gonna be acting in something, I'm gonna be on stage doing stand-up somewhere. That is what it is. But one of the major things I'm proud of is Blurge in the Hood with Winston. And Winston, what what are you as well as Blurs in the Hood or or Blurs in the Hood? <clears throat> Blurs, talk about in the hood Blurs in the Hood. Uh, but the big thing that I've been working on uh, a couple years ago when Philando Castillo, uh, Philando Castillo was killed, uh, I developed a show called Positive Black People News. Uh, this is almost like a precursor to what Some Good News was essentially. If you take last week tonight uh, and applied positive news stories about Black people, that's essentially what the show was. Um, and I have decided, based off of everything that's been going on, that I'm going to actually be reviving the show. Uh, I think that we need it more than ever right now. Uh, you want to see positivity. Uh, I don't need to see any more dead black bodies. I need to see these beautiful children that have made their own businesses. I don't need to see any more violence against college students. I need to see college students that invented, you know, the a vital piece that got NASA to finally get back into space. Like those are the things that the show promotes and we do it with jokes as well. Um, and so that's the thing that I'm, I'm obviously extremely proud of everything that Blurts in the Hood is doing and did yesterday, but that is the other big thing that I'm working on right now. Um, so please, uh, anybody that can check it out, youtube.com slash PBP news. Uh, you can check that out. Then obviously you can follow me on all the socials at the swaggy blur. Chance, what do you got? Uh, so the main thing I do is a podcast, Notorious by Chance. I've been doing it for about two years. Me and my buddy Russell Howell, we come and we talk everything entertainment. But we also, when something big like this happens, we always take the time to talk about it. Like this last show we published, uh, we took a, a good amount of the show to talk about George Floyd, talk about that situation. Uh, uh yes, <laughs> th- th- thanks, Bob. I appreciate it. <laughs> and, uh, it's actually funny you. It's actually funny you brought up uh, Mark Ellis because uh, this week we did a, uh, you know, addition that we did uh, talk about movies celebrating the 15th year anniversary, and we had Mark Ellis on to talk about 40 year old virgin with us. So that was that was a fun time. That sounds real weird. Just saying that together, we had Mark Ellis to talk about the 40 year old virgin. <laughs> <laughs> and, yeah, it's, it's a movie. It's a movie, and uh, you know, yeah, it was, it's a it's a, really, it's a really fun time. I encourage you to check it out. It's wherever podcasts are found. Excellent. And RB3, um, I know you do some pretty awesome stuff. Talk to us about it. Okay. I, uh, I got to say my. Winston, oh, this is sorry. what it feels like. Hello. Yeah. Okay. Uh, oh, okay. Oh, my bad. My bad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. There we go. Um, oh, I got to oh, say my, my laptop. <laughs> um, my laptop's at 1%, so I don't know how long this is going to last. But 
Um, I do want to shout out, I'm very proud of First Cut, the YouTube channel that I do with Andres Cabrera and Sabrina Ramirez. Um, and our meeting of podcasts, we, we, we've we been doing great stuff. We just had John Roker on this week to talk about Kira Kurosawa. Um, and this week we're going to have on Josh Trank. Um, that we're, you know, it's huge, huge, uh, big, big excitement uh, for, for, for us on that. So it's going to be talking about his filmography and all that kind of stuff. I'm just proud of everything I've been able to build, all the fans I've been able to talk to through SCN. Um, I want to shout out all the black community, the black Schmodown fan community. Um, Larry Payne is one of those guys, uh, especially from the Finstock Initiative uh, podcast. Um, you know, and he's gone. Oh, and he's gone. Oh, oh, man. Man, I can. I can add to that, though. I can tell you that one thing he was he was getting there with the Finstock Initiative with with Larry Payne. Um, they're actually they're partnering tonight with the Call to Action crew to do a fundraiser stream on. I, I think it's uh, I think it's on the Call Channel. I'm not sure which channel it's going to air on, but um, I I might make an appearance on there. I know a number of other Schmodown people are going to jump on there, and it's another fundraiser uh, stream talking about what's going on right now. So, John, you and I can talk in just a second about the things we're doing, maybe at the end yeah. of the show here. But yeah, let's uh, let's chat for a couple more minutes about kind of what's going on here in the Schmodown. I think we can talk maybe briefly here at the end about what's coming up in the league uh, because, you know, this is a Schmodown show and I think some people here probably are interested in what's going on with that. Um, I know, I know this week's match, the star Wars match. Um, actually is, is the star Wars match happening this week, John? Not today. Not today. They canceled it. Uh, uh, Demolanta told us that on the uh, Finstock on the uh, Finstock exchange thread that he, they canceled the match today out of respect for everything that's going on. And I think it was a wise move by then. So Scrimshaw and Demolanta go back to their neutral corners and they'll probably get into it again next week. But uh, the big I story, maybe a double header. I heard maybe a double header. Yeah, maybe week. a double header. So, but the big story is Laura Kelly. Y'all better get ready for Laura Kelly. Holy Mary, oh, mother yeah. of God. This woman has become a completely different performer almost overnight. With that promo following with that victory, you're just like, whoa. Uh, so uh, right now, she's become the odds-on favorite this side of Andrew DiMolanta for her, for me on my end to win this whole damn thing. And so I got to give love up to her for sure. Yeah, she's pretty impressive. Um, I like her promo work, too. I think she's a good addition there for Corruption. I like what she's doing there. Um, that's that's definitely been exciting to watch. Uh, so you guys can go watch that. It's uh, The replay is up from last week against Sean Sullivan, who is another exciting player. Um, and, and that's that's very exciting. The the Inner Geekdom Tournament has posted on Patreon. So if you guys are patrons of the Movie Trivia Schmodown, patreon.com slash the Schmodown, you can go watch the first play-in match for Inner Geekdom. It is Ben Goddard versus Jim Vavida. Um, and it's, it's an interesting match. And definitely a pretty cool one to watch. If you're not a patron, it will post soon. But that's definitely something we can't talk about the results yet. Obviously, uh, Chance, you're you're competing in the IG tournament this year. Is that right? I am. I am, yes. Excited about that? Oh, I'm very excited. I've been <laughs> excited to get back into the IG. Chance, you're competing, thing. right? Yeah. Uh, you're excited? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, let me, let me, let me, let me finish. Let me finish. I'm I'm saying, I've, I've been my- excited to get back in IG since my debut last season. I always wanted to get back in, you know, get a win on the board. And, uh, yeah, I'm, re- I'm ready to do that. Who are you taking on, man? I got uh, <laughs> I got what's this boy, Paul Yama. Oh, First prime right. time, yes. prime time. Prime. Prime. Is, he, is, he, is he is he prime? Rest time? in peace to my bro, Shag. This is a is this is a anymore. He's Paul Yama. This is a long dude. This is a long rivalry, man. This has come from the fan leagues up into the main leagues. Oyama right. versus Ellison. This is fun. Ellison, now, uh, remind me again who won last time you guys played? Who got that match? Who was he the did. winner of the last time you he, played? He, he won. He won. I'm aware. I'm aware. <laughs> That's right, oh, son. That's right. That's my right. boy, my son out here about schooling all the mother little kids on the playground. I didn't worry about that. Let's you know, I'm not. Is winning something he even does anymore? First of all, first of all, oh my lord, Jesus! You're gonna be oh. eating them words, sir. You're gonna be oh. eating them words. Is that right? Yes, okay. you are. <laughs> oh my God! You got y'all better end this. I, 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 I will ready. come. To you to, look, I told you you could share my big mama. My big mama will come over there and get your butt. <laughs> oh my and, God! Oh, 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 right. oh, y'all are so wrong. Oh, he doesn't even know how to win them. No oh, that is just ouch. That hurt so much. I'm just, I'm just, just asking a hey, 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 question, hey, but <laughs> what happened? <laughs> All I know, we heard bing, 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 bing. I'm just saying, I'm just asking a legitimate question, but no, yeah, I'm ready. I hope he's ready. I know it's going to be, you know, it's going to be a good match because he's no slouch and I'm better ready to take him on. I like, it. yeah, it's, it should be a good match. That should be exciting. Um, obviously, you know, with the, with the Schmodown, the future of what's going on. I know John, you and I are in weird positions right now because we both were a, a number one contender match away in singles away from playing and, it doesn't look like we're going to get to play for a while. 
Um, so we're just watching as all wow. these Star Wars and Inner Geek Dimensions. Wow. Uh, the the ego you have to have have i mean yourself in your room yo yo john Uh, John, excuse me what does that that say right there can you read that no right there that this is a this is a pic of a friend who sent that in sir sir, that says right there that says get out all right (laughs) 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 handle that please (laughs) <laughs> um, no, I'm, I'm excited. I'm excited, Ellison, to watch your match against Oyama. I think that should, that should be a good one to watch. You know, the other one that we have coming up that I think has been announced is that we've got Greg Alba versus the Warfather in Inner Geekdom. That's another one that should be really interesting to watch. Mm-hmm. So, you know, next week on Backstage, we should be back with some, you know, some other some other guests to talk a little bit more about matches that are going on. Unless, of course, the world does not get back to any recognizable uh, rhythm that we can actually exist in. And, and, and maybe that's the case. I really hope not. I really hope not, but um, you know, I think we're all we're all hopeful that things are a little less inflamed and violent next week. We were mad at 2017 for taking Princess Leia. I mean, like I think all of us would love to go back to 16, 2017, 16, or 2016 into 2017, right? Because 2020, man, I'd happily go back to 2016. Hey man, I'm know the year ain't even halfway over with yet. We've been man, going. Through- I mean, it's it's tough between losing Prince and where we are. Can I, can, I make, yes. can I make a request if we're going to time travel in the last four years? We just go back to 2018. That was a fun year. All right. Like, can we go back, to, the- can we go back to 15? We got Star Wars back. <laughs> Fury Road came out. <laughs> Obama was still in office. I, I just, I just, I just want to go back to when I had money in my bank account. Oh, here we go. Here we go. I mean, that's the best time to go back to. Why y'all, y'all sitting there picking obscure years? I just want to go with my bank account out of pocket. No, 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 no. I don't hit that pick. I don't hit that pick. <laughs> oh, man. Um, well, anyway, guys, I, I think we probably can wrap out here in just a second. Um, John, talk to everybody about whether, where they can find you with Outlaw Nation. Oh, yeah, yeah. You always, can, you always can find me at The Roca Says on Twitter and on Instagram. And, yeah, the Outlaw Nation YouTube channel, uh, youtube.com slash John Roca Says. Uh, so much great content on there. You know, you see those two gentlemen right in front of you there, Jay Winston and uh, – uh, uh, I'm sorry, Jay Washington and Winston Marshall. They both are on game time every Monday. Uh, we have a grand old time doing that. I've got Outlaw Nation show coming up later on this week. Darina Arellano is going to be my guest, and we're going to raid at the machine for a couple of hours. And I think we're going to raid – whatever we get, from Streamlabs, and we're going to donate that as well. I've got the Geek Buddies on there. Might be doing a live stream of that tomorrow where the donations go. And then Strong Style on Friday, the live show. Maybe Jay wants to stop by and join me and Aaron Turner. We'll do that as well for charity. So a lot of stuff coming up this week. Plus, the Outlaw Nation will, uh, on the Facebook group, the Outlaw Nation Facebook is launching their own Schmodown reaction show. It's called the Ultimate Schmodown Show, and it is going to be a lot of fun. We've picked four great people to host that show. Once again, inclusive uh, and to be a part of that show. So I'm excited to uh, to have that launch once and for all. So come join the channel. The channel is all about inclusivity. You know, we got Alex Shawshank with me on Mornings with the Outlaw as well. So very much trying to convey and practice what I preach about inclusivity with my channel. So we appreciate your patronage in any way. Excellent. And guys, remember uh, to subscribe to the feed here on audio. If you can listen to the show every single week as a podcast, it is available. You can find it anywhere your audio shows are available. Hit that subscribe button below if you haven't already. And if you're interested in checking out one more channel, I do host a thing called Nerds and Suits. It's a brand new thing I launched very recently. YouTube.com slash Nerds and Suits. There's two shows on there right now. One's an interview show. I actually have Andrew Guy as my guest this, this Friday, which should be pretty fun. And uh, my birthday, my 32nd birthday is on Saturday, and I'm doing uh, a stream with a huge announcement, a massive announcement on Saturday on the channel, 5 p.m., um, that I'm really excited about. It's, uh, I'm doing a lot of music on that channel, and uh, this will be a music-related announcement. So um, come check it out, youtube.com slash Nerds and Suits, trying to get to 2,000 subs by Saturday, if possible. I really appreciate everybody watching. I really appreciate you guys coming on as guests today. This was a great say- show. I wasn't yeah, yeah, yawning. Somebody was like, yo, Jay yawning because he bored. Jay hasn't been to sleep. Jay's <laughs> body is shutting down. <laughs> it's, it's just been too stressful to sleep, so I haven't been asleep. But yeah, man, uh-huh. good luck. So I just wanted to make clarify that. Yeah, no worries, man. But I, I just I appreciate you guys coming by for the show. I know this is a I know this is a tough time to want to guest on any show. It's a, it's a little bit scary as to what's going to happen when you go on air. You never know, especially when times are as heated as they are. Um, but you guys did a great job today, and it was it was done Thank with you. a lot of respect. And I was just very very happy to see 
in this chat, there was really a ton of support. Definitely always some trolls, but uh, a lot of great support in here. And, and I was very happy to see that. So remember, you guys can donate to, to Color of Change until the end of the day. Every dollar that comes in through streamlabs.com slash the Schmodown still will go to that charity by the till the end of the day. So go do it. Go donate. Be a part of it. Be a part of the movement. And we appreciate you guys' support here. See you guys next week. John, thanks for coming by. And we'll Thank see you all soon.